The Rebbe starts off the Sikha by saying that it's known that the main chidush that happened at Matan Torah was the fact that Anon Nafshi Ksovis Yehovis. The word Anoich in the beginning of Aseris Adibrois, the Gemara says, stands for Ano, Oi, Hashem Nafshi, my very soul, my very essence, Ksovis Yehovis, have put in into my writings. Hashem had put himself into the Torah. This is also the reason why we say that Torah never ever changes. Torah is eternal. There can't be any change in Torah, just like there cannot be any sort of change in Hashem, so too there's no change in Torah and mitzvahs. Says the Rebbe, since the eternity of Torah is taken from the fact that it's Hashem's very essence inside the Torah, we understand that this is true not only regarding Torah Shabbat, the written Torah, but also Torah Shabbat and every aspect of Torah Shabbat. In this particular sikha, the Rebbe is looking at the things in Gemara and in Rambam that deal with Things like medicine and the nature of people. The Rebbe says these parts of Torah as well, since they are a chelik and Torah, a part of Torah, so obviously they cannot change. And the question becomes that seemingly we find regarding various different segulois and refua, medicine, things to do with health that are mentioned in Shas, that in says in Sfarim that we can no longer apply these particular medicines because nishtanu ativim. The constitution of mankind changed. The nature of people changed. So we can no longer use these refuos. And the question is how this would fit with the eternity, with Nitzchi Yisha Says the Rebbe, all would be understood if we're speaking about something that it says clearly in the Gemara, that you're not supposed to do something because of particular danger. So we can understand that if that danger, that particular circumstance doesn't happen now, so then the Isur also wouldn't apply. But if these things say in the Gemara without any conditions, without saying that it applies only in certain places or times, how can we come along and say that it doesn't apply now because the nature has changed? Then the same question, says, says the Rebbe, is in the Rambam as well. The Rambam tells us that for the body to be healthy and whole is part of Avoidus Hashem. But the Rambam doesn't stop there. The Rambam actually spends a whole peric in telling us how one needs to conduct himself with his eating, with his drinking, and so on. And clearly, says the Rebbe, it's understood that this is a part of the Torah, that's the part of the eternal Torah. When you learn this peric in Rambam, you're fulfilling the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. You would need to make a bracha before learning these halachas in the Rambam, the birchas Torah. And the question is the same idea. Since the nature of people does change, and a lot of these things seemingly don't apply today. So why is the Rambam putting this in as part of the halacha in Torah? Or the Rambam should have at least written that this only applies for a certain time. The Rambam doesn't do that, which makes it sound like it's part of the regular halachas in Torah, which are eternal. So how do we understand this? So in order to explain this, the Rebbe first compares it to another similar sort of idea. The Rambam tells us regarding the mitzvah of destroying the seven nations. Why do we count this mitzvah today if practically we can't fulfill this mitzvah today? And the, the question becomes, why is it counted as one of the 613 mitzvahs? Usually mitzvahs that don't apply in all times, we don't count as one of the mitzvahs. So the Rambam explains that it's not like the mitzvah doesn't apply. The mitzvah applies in any time that we have the seven nations and that we can destroy them. So if we destroy the seven nations or if we cannot destroy them for whatever reason today, it's still a mitzvah that applies today. It's just technically we don't have these nations who this mitzvah would apply to. Says the Rebbe, so maybe we could uh, I, I apply the same idea over here. That all of the refuos that are mentioned in the Gemara and Rambam do apply today, but we don't have the same sort of physical body as existed then. And then maybe this is the reason why we cannot have these refuos, but it's not like as if the refuos don't, uh, don't have their true eternity, it's just that we don't have the same body similar to the idea that the seven nations don't exist. But the Rebbe is not completely satisfied with this because in this case the Gemara or the Rambam don't say any conditions and saying it's only if you have a particular body and the nature in a particular way, that's when these medications will work. So we're back really to the same question of how can we understand that on the one hand, all of the things that say in the Gemara are eternal, they're part of the word of Hashem and they're eternal, and yet they seem not to apply these days. In order to explain this, the Rebbe introduces a cloud that we know regarding Torah, 
that really everything that Torah, that, that, that the Torah tells us, first of all and primarily, exists in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual worlds. It also comes down to express itself in the Gashmi world. In other words, it's not like we say that every mitzvah or every story or everything in the Torah exists by Gashmis, but it also has a hint of Ruchnis, but it's really the other way around. Everything starts off in the Ruchnis, the world, it then also expresses itself in the Gashmis, the world, in the physical world. Now, obviously, every story that the Torah tells us or everything that the Torah tells us, of course, it is true Begashmias, a mikro yoitzim in the Pshutis so of Torah tells us that something happened, number one, it's Begashmias, but it all starts off from the Ruchni Yisdika world. And every mitzvah, although of course, we need to fulfill the mitzvah Begashmias, but behind the Gashmi Yisdika mitzvah, there's a spiritual reason for it. And it starts off in the spiritual worlds, what is the source for this particular idea of the Gashmi Yisdika mitzvah? Similar to what Chazal tell us, that Masha who also what Hashem Himself does, in other words, what's happening in the spiritual world, then Hashem comes and tells us to do it in the Gashmi is the world. This is no contradiction to the idea that Hamaiso Eka, the most important, is the action in this world. That's true. Hashem wants the action to be fulfilled in this world. But where it all starts off was first in the spiritual source up above. Says the Rebbe, this will also help us now in understanding whether it comes medicines and shas or the Rambam's instructions for how to eat, in, 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 in how, how we still apply this idea of Nitzchi Yisha Torah. The Rebbe says, when Torah tells us instructions of what a specific rufua is, a specific medicine and so on, number one, it's speaking in the spiritual worlds. That means number one, we're speaking about the source, how it is up Lamaila, and how these things are Baruchnis, they are eternal forever and ever. And these medicines and these cures work all the time. Or to put it simply, the inyanim of the guf, the ideas of the guf, it's eating, it's health, and so on, is all a hishtalshlus, it's coming down from these very same inyanim, how they are in regards to his soul. And regarding the eating and the health of the, the ruchnis of the soul, all of these things are true absolutely in an eternal way. In this there's absolutely no change. It is only how it comes down into our world, in Gashmias, there may be a difference. That when things were going the way they're supposed to be going, and our Gashmias and our world matches and fits with everything in the spiritual worlds, so then these refuos also work physically. Whereas when there became a certain Yerida in our world, a certain descent in our world, where our world and our Gashmias is not matching so much the Ruchnias, then it could happen that these refuos are only going to remain true in the ruchni yisdika sense, but not impacting us the same way on, in our physical bodies. The Rebbe gives an example to this from the idea of karbonos, which is really in a certain sense like a spiritual refuo. In the times of the base of Miglish, a person brought a carbon, this brought refuo, this brought cure for his sin. But when the situation changed, we are in Golos. So this same refuah, this carbon doesn't help anymore. Now we need to do something else instead. We need to do tshuva, we need a daven, and so on. The Rebbe says the same thing is true with what the Rambam tells us. The Rebbe quotes a tumim, which says that everything that the Beis Yosef and the Ramah, and so true is true with all of these sfarim, of these great tzaddikim, is all the words of Hashem. And therefore we understand when the Rambam tells us these refuahs, although the Rambam is speaking about physical things, but nevertheless, they all again really may, mean mainly, first of all, the spiritual meaning. In other words, there's the, the spiritual idea of how a person has to act in, the, in, in, in eating and drinking beruchni, is affecting his nefesh, and these things are always true. Even though Bergashmi, as the Rambam is speaking about, in an open way, he's speaking about the physical health, but all of these things are also true in regards to the spiritual health of the Neshama. And these things are eternal and, and everlasting all of the time. Even though sometimes we don't see it, how it translates Bergashmi to our goof. The Rebbe says, this idea, that Torah is in essence speaking Beruchni, Be'ayoinim, and second of all, coming down Bergashmi, is really relevant also in the way Ayid learns Torah. There is the way Ayid learns Torah betach toinim. In other words, in the Gashmi is the world, he's dealing more with the nigla part of Torah, of how we see the external part of Torah dealing with the Gashmi of the world. And then there is the Pnimi, is the secrets, the esoteric part of the Torah and mitzvahs, the reasons, beruchni is for each one of these things. And this is what Ayid is told, that even though, of course, on the one hand, the halacha, the psak halacha is definitely taken from nigla the Torah. 
But one always needs to realize <clears throat> that deep inside and hidden behind the halach is the way they are but nigla, there is the panimi yusayin yonim, there is the oyer, there is the chayis, there is the spiritual aspect of these halachas. And when a yid learns Torah in this way, recognizing that in every halacha there is the ruchni, is the idea, this actually helps him to feel in his nigla the Torah, that really it's purely chachmasa, yuritzayin yishal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that this is really the wisdom of Hashem, and it's really one with Hashem, this is godliness, that's what Torah is. And the Rebbe says, through adding and learning in both of these parts of Torah, Pnimius HaToyra, as well as Nigla the Torah, will be Zoycha to the Torah of Mashiach, which then will be clear that the whole world will be involved only in the knowledge of Hashem, as the Rambam puts it, and this law will be Beviyas Mashiach Tzedkeinu, Bemeheira Viyameinu Mamash.